Melissa Swan. For more than 30 years, she was one of the most respected television personalities in Kentucky, first as a hard-nosed reporter, later as co-anchor of the top-rated newscast in Louisville, and finally as co-host of the WHAS Crusade for Children. After graduating from Indiana University and working for Lexington's WLEX-TV, she moved to Louisville, first with WLKY-TV and then with WHAS-TV in 1985. Three years later, she was co-anchoring the 6 and 11 p.m. news, but kept reporting. Five days before giving birth, she told the mayor about the standard gravure mass shooting and did stories on it. She traveled widely for stories, reporting on Kentucky families helping orphans in foreign countries and war-torn areas. For the crusade, she told stories of special needs children helped by it. She retired in 2017 and is a member of the Kentucky Broadcasters Hall of Fame. When you receive an honor like this, so many memories come flooding back of all the people you need to thank. The news directors who gave me a chance, gave me a job, and gave me a paycheck. All the talented reporters, photographers, producers, and editors who made my job better every day. All the things they taught me. My wonderful husband and two daughters who never begrudged me the time it took to get the story. I recently read on a Facebook post, what would your career be if it was what you imagined as a child? I never could have imagined such a great career. It was a wild ride and journalism was my ticket. I've traveled to incredible places and I have met fascinating people. I remember the day I stood on the DMZ in Korea talking to a Kentucky soldier and then a few minutes later, I was looking across the zone into the steely eyes of a North Korean soldier. Who gets to do that? A journalist does. I was in New York City the day after 9-11, and I sat down to talk to the famous Kentucky sculptor Ed Hamilton and his wife Bernadette, who had been dining at the top of the Trade Center the night before the attack. They told me their story and expressed their grief through tears as did so many other people, including two mothers who one day were walking their young children to a fire station that had lost most of its members in the attack. And they didn't know how to explain to their little kids that their friend, firefighter Bob, would not be there any longer. I had a ringside seat at political conventions, presidential inaugurations, and plenty of Kentucky Derbies. Some days were stressful, but it was never boring. And some days, you just go with your gut. One spring at WHAS, I was talking about my All Sacred Sweeps piece falling through and the news director said, so what's your plan B? Well, I didn't have a plan B. So I said, you know, I think I've heard about people coming to Louisville in busloads at midnight to play bingo, and I think that's odd. So I started interviewing the bingo operators and the people who play bingo at midnight. And after a few days, my phone rang and it was a federal agent. And he said, we need to talk to you. So I walk over to the federal courthouse and he looked at me and he said, you are interfering with our investigation. They were about to bust the bingo hall operators and arrest them for money laundering in the all cash business. So I walk back to my news director, I tell him the story, and he said, fine, great. We'll hold all our stories, and then if they will give us the exclusive, and that's what happened. Pretty soon, Kentucky laws were changed, people were going to jail, people were arrested, and I was doing bingo stories for years. Very early in my career, I was sent to Southern Indiana to cover the escape of two uh, inmates. When I arrived at the wooded area, there were all kinds of police there and a helicopter hovering overhead, and I was the only female there. So the police and the photographers start running along, along a railroad track, and I fall farther and farther behind because 
I was wearing heels. At some point, I hear a crack in the woods, and I look over, and out come the escaped inmates with their hands above their heads. And I'm standing there by myself. I have no idea what to do. So I shook my reporter's notebook at them, and I said, don't you move. Don't you dare move. Well, they were back in custody in a matter of moments, and I learned never underestimate the power of a reporter's notebook. The words in those books are powerful. I think of all the people who let me tell their stories, who gave me the happy and sad experiences of their lives, and I thank them for trusting me with that. It is really a huge leap of faith for them, and I will be eternally grateful. And talk about being a witness to history. Co-hosting the WHAS Crusade for Children showed me a community's incredible goodness and what can be achieved when everyone works together. To the journalists still on the job today, don't let anyone ever tell you that what you do is unimportant, unworthy, or fake. Your community and your country need you. So keep digging. Go with your gut and never give up. This class of honorees know that all about that. They have been in the trenches, and I am deeply humbled to be in their company. <laughs>